Well, when we first released our, uh, our first EP, um, Nick and Flo were a huge part in it. They would pretty much, uh, they would come up with riffs like for each song, the main riffs for each song, which would be like a bass, and then they'd uh, bring it over to band practice. And then when it came down to writing a full length and having to write the new songs, like we all worked on them together. The writing process for the album was actually uh, a very positive and pleasant uh, process for me. It wasn't like there's one guy who wrote all the songs and then brought them in and then the other guys just had to learn them. This time around it was, we all got together, we all brought ideas, everybody had a huge part in, uh, in writing this record. When Chris left, Dylan took over uh, drums too, just for the writing process of the record, so Dylan did actually double duty on this album which is amazing to me. Uh, he did drums and then vocals. And then we uh, got Maddie to join. Kind of just put my flair on what Dylan had created because Dylan wrote most of the drum parts for this record. I just kind of tried to do what he did, like take all his best parts and um, add something creative. It's called Peaks and Valleys. The reason we call it that is because a lot of the songs, lots of highs and lows in the lyrics, as in positive things and more negative things. Once we realized that the lyrics were going this way, we wanted to call the album something along those lines to kind of tell listeners that's what it's about. Lyrics came later. We did write a lot of lyrics in Vancouver uh, once we got to the studio, and we didn't have set rules about how to write the album. So I think we just kind of went with the flow of how we were working. All of a sudden it's Deej and Dill and I are sitting upstairs and kind of a round circle where we're listening to tunes and coming up with lyrics and melodies and just bouncing stuff off one another. The inspiration for the songs I think comes from just everyday life. We sing about stuff that everybody goes through, you know. The thoughts and emotions that we just feel like are worth writing down. A lot of us come with from different music backgrounds, different genres, and a lot of us can play different instruments. And there's lots of egos and personalities and things that go into it that's not necessarily in your control, so it's um, kind of a give and take process. Uh, suppose there's lots of peaks and valleys in the whole process of recording a record. Uh, working with Stu McKillop and Mark McKittrick was it was a good experience. It was very easy. If I was having trouble with a line here or fitting a, a certain amount of words in a line, you know, I'd ask Stu, like, because Stu's had experience with vocals. Uh, Stu and Mark, like, probably like two, like, the most easygoing guys. So easy to work with. Really creative, great ideas. So obviously, Stu with uh, his background in playing in Daggermouth and uh, Precursor. He's had a lot of experience doing punk rock hardcore metal, all that stuff. It's really fucking hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Recording is hard. One more. <laughs> so, to keep things light, I think, uh, I mean, we spent two full weeks in the most beautiful city in the world, Vancouver. One advantage that was uh, that was nice at the studio was there was video games and uh, we kept a full fridge of food. There was some street hockey equipment, so we just went upstairs and set up the nets and the sticks and we just shot around for a while, which was fun and we all had a good laugh and I think that's really cool to almost end a day like that when you're done recording in the studio for that amount of time. You go out and you go have a bite and you, you know, just 
and you won't even talk about band stuff. You talk about just stupid stuff that 24 year old guys talk about. Um, the Indiegogo cash uh, that we got from our supporters helped us book the studio time here in Winnipeg and also in Vancouver. We pretty much put it all towards like the record and like and, uh, traveling to Vancouver and actually making every making this record possible. It was a bonding experience, two, three weeks together recording a record that otherwise wouldn't have been possible without the funding that we received from friends and family. And Just for people to believe in us or want to see us do better and to really just and put in the money that they work for, which I think that is pretty amazing. So we really do ex extend our thanks and our love to those people. When we heard the final results, when we were getting emails and all the songs back from Stu, back from Rain City Recordings, um, it, I was blown away. I couldn't believe that was uh, that was us. I'm really happy with uh, how the record turned out. Uh, it's an amazing quality, and I had never imagined it being so good. I think if you know us individually, you'll hear little bits and pieces of everybody throughout the record. But I really have to say, I think they're all good songs. Ender. Ender. Ender is really fun to play. Uh, just, just the thrashy parts, like all the fast parts, like I love that stuff. Blood, Sweat and Tears, we put in those songs. I don't know, I guess if my favorite would be on there, it would probably be Like Father, Like Son. It's a totally, I think it's a different song in the album. It's a little slower, it's a little more kind of rock. That was one of the songs that I just wrote, I think, on my own, with like a little help from DJ and writing mel cool melodies and harmonies. Thinking of my dad singing like I do now for 20 years of his life, and now I'm singing in a band. I think that kind of just like hit home with me, so I think that's more of a memorable song for me on the album. <laughs> Just a little more! Laying it down. We hope to just keep busy, stay busy, and play a lot of shows. Uh, well, like growing up with uh, three sisters and not having any brothers, these guys were like uh, family to me. Nick left the band and uh, Zach joined the band. I think we finally found a really good setup. And so we just, we've been just growing and evolving. I think being on tour is the big goal, I think, when you being a when you're in a band, driving for like 10 hours, going to a venue, playing a show, and then like going to sleep on some random floor, and then waking up and doing the same thing over again, this is something that like I just love. We're just gonna push forward. I think we're all live musicians at heart, and that's where we draw so much of our inspiration is get our music out to people. Uh, connect with people as much as we can, uh, network and just meet new people. We're gonna do like a few festivals, you know, do some short tours. If you ever have a chance to go to Vancouver and you run to Stu McKillop, you should uh, ask him about Papa Sirloin and he'll spit some verses at you. Uh, okay, we got a motherfucking exclusive track right now. We got my man Sirloin coming on Distance's track. Yeah, check this bitch.
That's awesome. Yeah. It's perfect timing.